Good morning. morning. From Muscat, Oman. Super excited for our first day here. We are going to head to the Mutra area, which is famous for its souks. Let's get started. So while we were at the prep station, we got talking to a local and essentially the process seems to be that fishermen go out, they catch all this fish, they then bring it to this market where the market sellers then sell the whole stock wholesale. That can either go to supermarkets, restaurants, or it can go to the average everyday consumer, but each of them get exactly the same price. Those at the supermarkets and the restaurants get big crates full of fish. The average everyday punter, if they wanna just prep it at home, they can do that. If not, then they go to a prep station where they can get it all filleted, prepared for a lovely feast. Fresh crates, let's give it a go. They were so friendly, but now we're moving on to Mutra Souk. showing us all his different teas which smell amazing but he's gifted us kindly these chocolate covered dates yeah. with almond inside with almond yeah mm. oh my god <laughs> um, how could you not chocolate almond dates yeah thank you please <laughs> you're welcome Oh, 
us in absolute maze, but somehow we retraced our steps to get out of it. Mucha Souk is open from nine in the morning till one in the afternoon, and then again from four in the afternoon until 10 in the evening. And all the locals said that it gets more lively in the evening, but we came in the morning, which was kind of nice that it wasn't so crowded. But it did mean that every single seller saw us as like the only two people who were walking through the suit and we were strongly encouraged to come into each of their shops. But everyone was super friendly and they would say hi and ask us where we were from. And it was actually really interesting to learn about all the different teas and perfume scents and I liked seeing all of like the cashmere and again genuine fake goods. They also had a ton of different textiles that people were buying. I think there was like pre-made as well as you could just go in and buy material and get something made. They had jewelry. It was a real melange of different things. And it also seemed like there were a number of different kind of food stands, drink stalls and things like that. They were much fewer and further between, but they were all selling stuff for quite cheap. So if you found yourself in a bit of a tight spot as far as food and drink were concerned, then you can help yourself to that as well. Yeah, it seemed like most things in the market were one real maybe two, which would be like $3.50 to $7 Canadian. Of course, because we're backpacking, it's just not feasible to buy any souvenirs as much as we might want to, but it actually all seemed quite affordable. So we just swung by a place called Juice Mall so we can pick up some falafel sandwiches, and then we went back to the market to pick up some extras, so we got some pears, some dates, and a couple of juices all of which were very reasonably priced so that we can enjoy those over the coming days. And if you're wondering why we are riding in taxis, O-Taxi is like the Omani version of Uber. Where our Airbnb is located, it is five kilometers to walk up to the nearest public transportation. And of course, in this heat, that kind of isn't really practical. So it costs one Omani real to get a taxi up to public transportation. And then it's only one Omani real to get on the public transportation to Mutra. However, a taxi to take you the whole way from our Airbnb to Mutra is two real. So it's the same price, whether we go a combination of taxi and public transit or just taxi. So we just opted for convenience and uh, pay in the same price so that's why normally we would never take a taxi because we're backpacking on a budget but in this case it all works out the same good morning we have just picked up our rental car from Muscat Airport and now we are on our way to Sultan Qaboos Grand Mosque before we leave Muscat. We were planning on going yesterday but because it was Friday it was closed so we're hoping that it is open this morning. On their website it says that it's open daily to non-Muslims between 8.30 and 11 in the morning except for on Fridays so let's head there and find out. Sultan Qaboos Grand Mosque was built between 1994 and 2000. It consists of five different minarets and was made from 300,000 tons of rock, predominantly consisting of Indian sandstone, and then wood and glass filled in the other materials to make this up. This 
is one of the largest in the Middle East. It used to be the largest before the Sheikh Zayed Mosque in Abu Dhabi was constructed, but this can still hold up to 20,000 worshippers at once. gorgeous. My jaw genuinely dropped when we first went in. Can't even begin to describe just how beautiful that looked. I was saying to Rachel when we got in, like it looked like they had elements of some of the different moths that we found to be like particularly remarkable. So it looked like they had some of the wooden ceilings from Hassan the Second Mosque in Casablanca that we visited last year. And then the dome looked very similar to that at the Blue Mosque that we visited in Istanbul and so on and so on. And it looked like they kind of took inspiration from a lot of the best and most renowned Grand Mosques that had come before to create this, which is just a beautiful, harmonious blend of everything good architecturally that we've seen so far. Yeah, I found it to be, again, so serene and peaceful. It takes those colors from the earth, like the blues, greens, tans, brown, white, a little bit of gold, and combines it, and you just feel peaceful and tranquil inside. The dome in the center of the ceiling and the square surrounding it, the detail of that mosaic was so intricate and stunning, just the most gorgeous blue and so like the pattern, amazing, just blew my mind. And then they have elements of like stained glass, which are gorgeous. There's a mix of this incredible simplicity, but yet it's ornate. I don't know how they do it. We actually ended up rearranging the time of our rental pickup so that we could make sure that we came here. And I'm so glad that we did. This is so incredible. You just have to visit it if you are in Moscow. Yeah, you can't miss it. I realize we never told you who Sultan Qaboos is. So he was educated in England and then he came back here to Oman. With British support, he ended up overthrowing his father in a coup d'etat. He was absolutely loved as a sultan because he really strengthened political and economic ties to Europe and North America and really opened Oman up to the rest of the world. He also greatly improved infrastructure here and he even liberalized a lot of the Omani laws. He unfortunately passed away in 2020, and it's an interesting story because he originally wanted the people of Oman or like the government to choose his successor upon his death, but he had a hidden letter which named a successor just in case they couldn't come to consensus. And upon his death, they ended up just opening this letter and it named his cousin to be his successor as Sultan. And so that's who the Sultan currently is. We are now going to leave the mosque. So that concludes our time in Muscat. Until next time, take care. And keep smiling.